Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko and we begin tonight with an update on Griffin Hoffman. He is the high school sophomore who was just 16 years old in March when he took a little blue pill he thought was a prescription painkiller, one that turned out to be filled with fentanyl that ended his life. Now Griffin's family is suing the drug dealer. Federal prosecutors say supplied that very pill as he awaits trial on criminal charges. Let's bring in our Alma McCarty. Alma, I've talked to Griffin's mother, Carrie, many, many times over the last six months. This evening, you talked to her lawyer. David, yes, attorney Sean Riddell is representing her as the family takes the case to civil court. They're seeking hundreds of thousands of dollars from the suspected supplier, Manuel Souza Espinoza. But they know no amount of money will bring back their son. Griffin Hoffman, just 16 years old, was a student at McDaniel High in Portland. He was a tennis star and a kid suffering from anxiety. In March, Griffin unknowingly took fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid in the form of counterfeit oxycodone. I figured in the beginning that he took something. He must have taken something and not known. And right away they found those blue pills. KGW spoke one on one with Griffin's mother, Carrie Cohen, earlier this year. First thing I saw was his hand because his dad was holding it, trying to find a pulse and there was no pulse and it was just blue. Investigators traced the drugs in Griffin's room back to an alleged drug trafficker, 24 year old Manuel Souza Espinoza, charging him with supplying the fentanyl that killed Griffin. If convicted, Souza Espinoza could face 20 years to life. There's all sorts of forms of justice, and the criminal justice system is one form of justice that a victim can seek out. The civil litigation process is another way someone can seek justice. This month, Cohen filed a wrongful death and negligence lawsuit in Multnomah County Circuit Court. Attorney Sean Riddell represents Cohen, who is suing Souza Espinoza for $510,000. This money is a legal fiction. It is something the legal system has created in hopes to compensate the victim and to hold the defendant accountable. And as you can imagine, I could give them any amount of money or, or a jury could give them any amount of money. It's not going to fill the absence that is their son. On Thursday, Cohen provided this statement to KGW. We won't feel better if his life is destroyed like ours is. I wish it would, but the only thing we truly want is the one thing that's not possible. This case is about the principle. Money was seized, we should get it. If there's assets to be had, we should have them. That's really all there is to it. Now, Riddell says there's no telling how long the legal process could take in this case. Normally, he prepares his clients for litigation to take two to three years. Meanwhile, Souza Espinoza, the suspect, is due back in court for his criminal case at the end of the month. And we will be following that case closely next week on Straight Talk. By the way, a special conversation focused on fentanyl and young people. Thank you, Alma. Well, caught on camera, a man wields a big rock and then he chucks it at a passing car. Look at that. Steve Magnuson was behind the wheel here on Saturday near Southeast 49th and Hawthorne. He says the attack was completely unprovoked and left him rattled. If I see a cyclist come in the opposite direction, I kind of check them out. I slow down if there's like an unusual vehicle. Hopefully that'll go away with time. But I certainly won't. I certainly won't feel the same way again. Whew, turns out it is not the first time the suspect, 51-year-old Robert Casey McClatchy, has been accused of going after a driver. A woman said he also pulled up next to her and repeatedly hit her windshield with a bottle. For those recent attacks, McClatchy was cited for second-degree criminal mischief. That's essentially a ticket. He's been ordered to appear in court. Well, rail strike averted and as part of the deal, workers are expected to get the biggest raises they have seen in more than four decades. The rail industry has said the average rate rail freight worker salary will reach 110,000 by the end of the five year deal. Members of all 12 railroad unions still have to approve the proposal, but negotiators appear to be confident and that strike would have meant major disruptions to passenger service in our region, as well as crippled the nation's supply chain Amtrak says it is now working to restore long distance routes. It canceled in anticipation of that strike.
Well, new and 11 Oregonians are set to vote this November on changes around owning firearms. Supporters of a new ballot measure say it will help save lives amidst increasing gun violence. Catherine Cook is here now to break down the details of Measure 114. Catherine. Well, David, first of all, ammunition. Measure 114 would ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. And there would be required criminal background checks, safety training, and other steps, all before you even try to buy a gun. In Northeast Portland, they sang with the hope of ending gun violence. The shootings just don't stop. They call themselves Lift Every Voice Oregon. Since 2018, the group of interfaith leaders has been working to pass gun safety laws in Oregon. I don't have to convince you how urgent this is. Now, after gathering 161,000 signatures, another effort is on the November ballot, Measure 114. It basically will try to reduce gun violence, save lives. It's critical that we pass this in Oregon. If 114 passes, it would ban ammunition magazines over 10 rounds. Also, before even trying to buy a gun, you'd need a permit to purchase issued by local law enforcement. Applicants would need to show a photo ID, provide fingerprints, take gun safety training and pass a criminal background check, regardless of how long it would take to complete. Supporters say that last point is critical. They hope it will close a loophole in Oregon's background check system. Right now you can get it after three days even if you didn't pass the background check. That's no way to run a background check uh, system. I'm hoping people will pay attention to what this measure actually does and not the way it's being sold. The way Kevin Stayer heads up the Oregon Firearms Federation and staunchly opposes 114. He believes the law would mostly complicate access to guns for those who want to use them legally. The people who are behind this have spent decades trying to prevent honest citizens from having the means to protect themselves. This has, will have no effect whatsoever on mass shootings. There's not a single thing in it that would make any difference in those kind of events. Those kind of events happen because we simply, as a state, do not address mental illness. Welcome to Augustana Lutheran Church. Despite opposition, those gathered here hope voters will see it differently. Everyone knows there's a problem with gun violence. We have too many guns out there um, and we need to be pushing back, be, be slowing down. Now, earlier this year, Washington passed a similar law banning the sale of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Mail-in ballots for Oregon's November election go out October 19th. David. And no, no, no matter where you stand on this, I should say you should not forget to vote Catherine.